Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. Welcome again to a lesson on dominant seventh chords, a chord which I really love and I've used, I've been happy to have used it with a lot of, in a lot of scenarios. Um, so this is also a follow up from the earlier part, which hopefully you've watched that. If you haven't, do check that out as well. You can just find it in the channel or in the description. Uh, however, it's not really a continuation. It's just, I've just figured 10 ways of hearing and digesting and noticing and applying the dominant seventh chord to your music. So all of these ways are very different from each other. And I've tried to put all as much as I can into this lesson series. So in this particular lesson, I'm going to start off with the first part, which is the jazz 251 progression on the major scale. So using the major scale, I'm using F major for you, which is F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, one flat, B flat. And these are all the seventh chords of the F major scale. If you'd like some insights into seventh chords, you can definitely check out our theory lessons on the YouTube channel. There are quite a few. We also have courses. We have video courses where which will teach you all of this in a very sequential way. How to form it, note for note, and so on and so forth. So the Jazz 251 progression comes from this scale or any scale, major scale when you have first of all at least formed the seventh chords because jazz music generally uses seventh chords a lot in its formation. So if you take F major scale, the seventh chords are F major seventh, G minor seventh, A minor seventh, B flat major seventh, C dominant seventh, D minor seventh, E minor 7 flat 5 or the half diminished has that phi symbol and then F major 7th it's not really a new chord it's just just continuing so these are your F major scale 7th chords okay now where you can really digest the sound of the dominant seventh chord in is in the very very common jazz music progression which is two five one so these are all seventh chords diatonic to the key of f so the two minor seventh would be g minor seventh the five dominant seventh would be c dominant seventh and then it resolves to the f major seventh which is the tonic major seventh chord now we also put this sign indicating that you could repeat this for another bar you could also however play a secondary dominant chord which is the five of the two so d seventh kind of pulls back and loops it helps us loop it in a very strong way so this is a very common jazz progression so if you practice this you can learn a lot of songs and you can really identify the dominant seventh chord whenever it comes because it's the chord which precedes the tonic and it comes after this two. So the two goes to five going to one. So identifying the dominant seventh chord in this way becomes a very, very important thing to do. Let me just demonstrate this uh, with and without this D seventh at the end. So that's... G minor 7th, C dominant 7th, F major 7th, okay? You can do it four times. C, F, F. Or you can do G, going to C, going to F. Then the other chord, you can do D. And then go back to G minor 7. This is the dominant 7th chord, C7, which takes us to F major 7th. One more time. F major 7th. Repeat. That's D7th, 
that flavor chord at the end So that's your jazz 251 on a major scale. Now the next part kind of follows this immediately. That is the jazz 251 minor. Now the jazz 251 minor could either be considered as part of the minor scale or you could even build it from within the major scale itself. So let me try and demonstrate both use, use cases. So if you take the F harmonic minor, F harmonic minor is... F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E, F. So that's your flat 3, flat 6, D flat, raise 7th with respect to the natural minor, and yeah. So that's your F harmonic minor. Now, if you build your chords, you will find that the 251 from within this particular scale happens to be the G minor 7th, which is your 2, going to the C 7th, which is your 5. I've also written 5 flat 9. I'll talk about that shortly because it's a nice addition or a nice spice to add for the dominant 7th chord. And that resolves to a traditional 1 minor. So this is where you need to now know how to form the chords of a minor scale. In this case, the harmonic minor. So 1 minor, 2 will be a diminished, but when you add a 7th, it's going to be... A minor seventh flat five that is G B flat D flat F if you form the triads with that extension which is the seventh that's your C seventh going to F F minor so the whole story again would be G Minor 7 flat 5 going to C. This is your dominant C 7 going to F minor. I like also like a, a minor major 7. I, I quite like that. So uh, back to da -da 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 -da. Now, why did I add a flight, a, a, a flat nine? So let me help you now with the flat nine very quick. You go, this is your C seventh chord. The flat nine will not not will be the two flattened. Now, why does this work so well? Because it's part of the. It's anyway part of the F harmonic minor scale. So, and it offers an addition mag additional magnetic attraction to the tonic. So, there's. There's also la, da, la, da. So there's a lot of notes which are attracting to the tonic minor. Let me play around with it a little more. La, minor 7 flat 5 going to C7 flat 9 which is optional. La, da, 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 da. F minor. Do 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 do
Now, you could also look at this in the F major scale's context. So, in the F major scale, you have what we call as the relative minor, which is the D minor. How do we form the relative minor? We move the sixth from the scale. So, so the sixth of F is D. So, you could now say the two five one of the F major scale will be G minor seventh going to C seventh going to. F major seventh, but then you could also have the same minor two five one, which I taught you for the harmonic minor, which you could kind of use to go to the relative minor of F major. So you could go E half diminished or E minor seven flat five, which is the seven of F major, going to A seventh, which is the five of the D minor, which is the tonic minor. Okay, so if that was confusing, you can forget it and just practice it this way. But just to tell you that the two five one progression can be practiced in the key signature of F major as a minor two five one or even as a major two five one, which I taught you earlier. So as a major two five one, it will be G seventh going to G minor seven, sorry, going to C dominant seventh going to F major seven. And then you go E minor seventh flat five A going to the relative minor. So you could actually fool around and maybe play them together. Actually, like repeat major two five one G minor seventh C. F. Now, the other one, the minor. That's the major scale two five one, and then the minor. People do that as well. They'll combine the major two five one and the minor two five one. I don't do that very often, but there are a lot of songs which do that, and they do it very, very strongly and beautifully as well. Okay, guys, let's move on to the other way to really digest and get this dominant seventh chord into your system. Very important chord. Let's move on. Right, so in this demonstration of the awesomeness of the dominant seventh chord, I'm trying to explain it in a modal context. So I've chosen the mixolydian mode. The mixolydian mode kind of really presents this chord in all its glory. And what I like about using a, a, a scenario, a modal scenario, is the fact that you you don't have to really change the chords. You can just hold on to the chord. So A seventh could be just. Just play A, and now the entire mode or the entire melody will be built using the notes of this mode. Now, if you think about it, a mode is nothing but a scale. It's A mixolydian is what? It's just A major with a flattened seventh. If you think about it, but if you use this, and if you don't really play too many chords, and if you drone it with just the tonic chord, in this case A dominant seven. Gives you a very, as we say, modal flavor. Okay, so let me just show you what I mean. Let's first form the mixolydian scale in the right. That's A mixolydian coming down. As you can see, flat seven. So this chord really sits 
very well into that scale so what you should do to approach that chord is first play the chord either here or lower if you like i'm going to play it lower and just explore the notes of the mixolydian scale in the right hand everything is designed or based around this a dominant 7th chord another nice scale which could go over this you can flatten the 7th that's what we call as the mixolydian flat 6 or you could do the normal 6 so this is another nice way to digest the dominant 7th chord because it's used in this modal context you can also build smaller scales in your right hand instead of that whole mixolydian scale you could go that's nice or so i'm just building a few sub scales or smaller scales from within the uh, bigger scale in this case the mixolydian so in the mixolydian scale or even in the mixolydian flat 6 you have a flat 7 of course you form the scale improvise the scale in your melody in your right hand if you're a piano player and in the left hand you're going to play the 7 you could also try out the 7 sus 4 which instead of having the third it has the sus 4 which is the 4 that's the dominant 7th that would be your 7 sus 4 c sharp becomes d so both this will really serve the mixolydian flavor or the sound of the mixolydian really well that's another nice way to digest the seventh chord let's move on right everyone so in this penultimate usage of dominant seventh chords to train your ear theory and everything else i am using the subject the very popular theory subject and the very important theory subject called secondary dominance so with secondary dominance what happens is we choose chords or we use chords which are outside the key in this case i am using a flat major so we embellish or we add on to the existing palette of chords with our secondary dominant chords which are outside the scale of a flat but have the tendency have the locking potential or the magnetism to come back to a diatonic chord so what are the diatonic chords of a flat major a flat major being the one major uh, b flat minor being the two minor c minor being the three minor d flat major being the four major e flat major becoming the five major or the five dominant seventh now we call this as a primary dominant because it is it is a dominant seventh chord which is contained in the target a flat major scale so e flat 7 tends to resolve back to a flat then you have an f minor and then you have a g diminished now what we try to do is first of all you know the primary dominant which is e flat dominant 7 so that tends to go to a flat so what you're trying to answer or ask is what is the five of this what is the five of that so we name these dominant chords or rather secondary dominant chords because they are not part of the major scale they come into the a chord of the major scale so we need to know the five of the two 
5 of the 3, 5 of the 4, 5 of the 5 and 5 of the 6. So how do we compute this 5 of 2? So what is 5 of B flat? You need to know what is B flat's fifth. What is B flat's fifth? It happens to be F. So if you play an F seventh, it will very happily go to B flat minor. F seventh goes to B flat minor. It's stable. Okay, similarly, if you take C minor, as your target, what is C's fifth? G. So you play the dominant G, which is what I've written here as the five of the three. So F seventh goes to B flat minor. G seventh goes to C minor per power. Okay, similarly, A flat's dominant seventh will take us to the D flat major because D flat's fifth is A flat. So A flat seven takes me to D flat. Then you proceed forward. Then you have B flat dominant seventh going to the E flat major. It's also a dominant seventh chord, so so B flat to E flat is called as a five of the five. Don't get confused. B flat is a five of the five chord, which so the chord I've written with Romans and normal numbers just the five. That's the interval five. So F seventh is a five of the two. G seventh is a five of the three, which is C minor. A flat 7th is the 5 of the 4, which is D flat major. Uh, this thing, B flat 7th is the 5 of the 5, which is uh, E flat major. Lastly, we have 5 of the 6, which is C 7th going to F minor. So even though functionally this is the tonic chord, you know, everything is stable here and maybe here, when you add chords outside the scale, you just get this feeling that anything which it resolves to is actually very stable. And this is causing that because this is so unstable that th it makes all the these guys stable. And just a side note, you don't really have anything resolving to a diminished chord because a diminished chord is already quite unstable. So let me go over this again. In this entire lesson series, I've preferred to stick with many scales rather than show you everything on one scale so tighten up your theory if you feel it's a bit tricky write it down write it down a few times and try to digest this information a bit uh, more try to watch it repeat it if you can but i wanted to demonstrate this on many scales to try and get you to know all this stuff better so coming to a flat let's revise all this so first of all diatonically a flat B flat minor, C minor, D flat major, E flat major, F minor, G diminished, and A flat coming down. Those are all your A flat major chords. Important to know those first, and now you do your secondary dominant. So what wants to go to the one that's your five of the one that's e flat will go to a flat what wants to go to the two f major f dominant seventh will go to b minor and then g seventh will go to the c minor and then a flat seventh will go to the d, ma d flat major and then B flat dominant seventh will go to the E flat major. And then C dominant seventh will go to the F minor. You can use this in so many cases. Twinkle, twinkle, little star.
Yeah, sometimes it's good to read it while you practice because you can play a bit more freely and and utilize all these options. So have fun with secondary dominance, guys. It's a very very useful way to not only you know. Uh, get the sound of the dominant seventh chord into your system. It's also a great way to compose music and compose some very innovative music, which may not have been done very often in the past few uh, couple of decades. I guess people don't seem to use this stuff very often. They just seem to go diatonic, or it's just a standard progression, like one, five, six, four, or something like that, and. becomes very machine like or very robotic sometimes so it will be good for you to contribute to the the music listeners of today by playing some different stuff so secondary dominance is a great way to to move forward with harmony so let's conclude the lesson with my final way of using dominant seventh chords it's probably going to be a lot of fun so let's move forward so with the final technique of digesting dominant seventh chords i've just kind of proposed a strategy where instead of just playing a seventh chord you try and color those chords because a dominant seventh chord can be colored up the most among all the chords you can do so many things to it you can play all sorts of scales over it you can play uh, well some very very exotic scales you know over this particular chord so why not make the chord itself very colorful so i've used e seventh as my bass demonstration just e7 and i just want to show you a few colors of this particular chord which you will find very useful and you can use it to substitute the chord in in some cases or in some cases you could just use this uh, these colorful versions and see where it goes as a composition so first off the 7 sharp 9 chord so let's understand this you play the dominant 7 and what's a sharp 9 so a sharp 9 is some kind of a 2 so what's the 2 of e f sharp that will be your normal 9 but your sharp 9 would actually be one chromatic step above f sharp which is which is that a very jimmy jimmy hendrix sound lord in blues rock you could do e e7 sharp 9 So that's your seven sharp nine. So uh, E seven with a G at the end. Or oh, I guess we officially call it F sharp sharp. If you ever want to remember it that way, I would just say G. Very cool sound. You can play it like this as well. like that then we have the 7 flat 9 which i actually showed you earlier slightly in that minor 2 5 1 so there we go i would always use a 7 flat 9 when i'm resolving to the minor that's at least how i do it so what do we do for flat 9 again normal 9 down 1 flattening means go down 1 sharpening means up one flattening flat nine there we go now another great way of embellishing this would be a 7 sharp 5 so there you're going to do e 7th and i've mentioned your no perfect fifth so you go no fifth but instead of that you raise the fifth as the formula says 7 sharp 5 also call it an augmented chord because whenever you take a major chord with a sharp 5 it's an augmented with a flat 7 so, so this is e e 7th this is e 7 sharp 5 very uh, 
mystical or very dreamy actually this sound it could actually resolve it to the minor or major um there we go so now another very interesting way of using it would be 7 flat 5 so that's your 5 remove the 5 and flatten it here very chaotic there we go so normal 7th 7 sharp 5 7 flat 5 normal dominant 7 it's still unstable you know even more unstable flat 5 sharp 5 very unstable and normally major so yeah lastly you have 7 sus 4 so you take the this one so you take the 7 chord remove the third there we go and you got yourself a 7 sus 4 in a very ambient chord so right guys so we've covered 10 ways of using the dominant 7th chord i think all these 10 ways should hopefully give you the the years for it and the the theory knowledge for it so whenever you're faced with a scenario where you have to you know come up with a progression well the dominant chord will always be your best friend you you really need to know its function uh, at the word go you can use it as a five going to one a dominant going to tonic that's the classical way as we saw in the beginning that's the authentic cadence and uh, we've done a few more along the way so <clears throat> first of all i hope you watched the both the parts of the series if you watch this part first remember to go back to part 1 and uh, do the i've done i've divided it as 5 plus five and uh, yeah i hope you can practice this well and use it in your own music compose your own stuff and as always we'll be doing more and more of these lessons this was more of a theory slash ear training lesson so do stay tuned to the nathaniel channel and um, we have a website uh, which we've really spiced up recently where we put all the content on youtube because we've done Th- thousands of lessons right now over the past years so we've put all the lessons on our website nathanielschool.com you could go there and it's categorized really well so you could search for theory beginner level advanced level or whatever topics interest you so uh, head over there you can also consider going to our patreon where you'll get pretty much the notes of every single lesson which i will ever do it will help you supplement your learning stuff like that you see the entire notes are ready and waiting for you on patreon do consider going there um subscribe to our channel if you haven't already thanks a ton for watching as always this is jason here from the nathaniel school of music as always it's been a pleasure making this lesson for all of you uh, your comments and your support means a lot cheers and i hope to catch you in the next one